My name is Peter Sparks and I'm Symantec's Senior Director for Managed Security Services in Asia Pacific and Japan. While 2013 was the year of the mega breaches, 2014 was not any safer. Millions of users had their personal data compromised from organisations they transacted with. Symantec's Samir Kapuria recently spoke with ZDNet to discuss the evolving cyber attack landscape. Samir is the General Manager for Semantic Cyber Security Services. Let's find out what he has shared. Hello, I'm Bill Detweiler, Managing Editor of ZDNet's sister sites, Tech Republic and Tech Pro Research. We're talking today about information security with Samir Kapuria, Vice President of the Cybersecurity Group at Symantec. And really, who isn't concerned about information security? With all of the recent headlines of high-profile breaches, where millions of customers had their records and information compromised. Samir, we hope you can shed some light on the current threat landscape and tell us about the importance of security intelligence and the role it plays in protecting sensitive data. So thanks for being here, Samir. Great to join you, Bill. All right, so let's start out with what makes cybersecurity more of a moving target now than in the past? That's a great question. I think if you look at the cybersecurity realm, there's three things that come top of mind. First is velocity, second is volume, and third is variety. And those three elements make this much more of a moving target than any other industry. It's the only one where you've got an active attack actor changing the landscape on a daily basis. And we just look at the last year, there was a huge increase in targeted attacks focused on things like the Internet of Things. Um, and I'm not talking about that thing that measures how many steps you take a day. It's more around the, the critical infrastructure and the, the control systems that regulate energy or the public works. We also saw a big increase in, in attacks that were focused on identities. In fact, last year was uh, the time of, of the mega breach, where more than 10 million records were stolen at one time. So what does this tell you? It tells you that the attack actors are very focused on the gains that they can get of specific types of information. And that's really where we're seeing the, the, the increase in attacks emerge from. Right, so let's talk about a term that's often thrown around when you read security articles. Zero day vulnerability. What is a zero day vulnerability? So if we, if we look at the, the healthcare realm, there's a term called patient zero. It's when they first discover a new disease or outbreak, and they try and identify who that first patient was or who that first victim was, and they use that to help identify how that disease or virus spreads and what countermeasure that they can employ to thwart that illness. The same applies in the cyber realm, where patient zero becomes a zero-day vulnerability. The key here, though, is if you look at the life cycle of an attack, the attack actor's element of, of surprise is their advantage. So they usually stay in the dark and take advantage of a vulnerability that only they know about. But as soon as we, the good guys, find out about uh, a vulnerability, we put a label on it. We call it a zero day. And that's when the race begins for us and the clock starts moving where we try as an industry to identify how can we stop this from turning into an exploit. And then that next phase is after it's identified and we're able to have a countermeasure, that's when education and awareness around the, the zero day um, vulnerability comes to effect. Right, so speaking of people who are at the most risk for attacks, you know, large organizations usually make the headlines. You know, they're considered the juiciest targets. So how concerned do smaller, do mid-sized co mid companies really need to be? I think all organizations are, are open to attack. and and. Let me introduce a, a way to look at this. There's targets of chance, and that's when an attack actor or a hacker is out there and they're scouring the internet and they're finding victims, not by design, but by chance, by luck. And then there's targets of choice, where they're purposely selecting an enterprise or a company based on the assets they have, the intellectual property they have, or a monetary gain. The point is both groups have large enterprises, have small to mid-sized enterprises, have governments, and, and the key here is to understand that everyone is a potential target in those, in those scenarios. Another thing that we saw over the last year is a huge increase in, those, in the small to mid-sized companies mm. being targeted. And if you think about the ecosystem that exists 
um, in today's economic uh, landscape. It's, it's usually about relationships between big companies and small companies. So if you're trying to attack a big company, often enough that small company who might not have as much budget in protecting themselves is, is an island hopping um, land for, for an attack actor to, to focus on to then get into the bigger target. Right, and sometimes they don't have perhaps as good of security measures as a large company might have. They're the easier, they're the weak link in the chain. They could be. So you mentioned financial gain when we were talking about motivations just now. Yeah. What are some of the other motivations uh, that cyber criminals have for conducting these attacks? So much like uh, the animal kingdom where you have phylums, domains, and different categories, in, 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 in the attack landscape, we have different types of attack actors. You have hacktivists who are after five minutes of fame or digital anarchy. You have organized crime who are motivated by monetary gain. You have nation states who are focused on secrets that give them some sort of national advantage. And you have insiders who might be focused on uh, revenge, or maybe it's just an unintentional mistake that r results in an attack. The point being, you have multiple types of attack actors, each focused on a different goal. And because of that, you gotta look at it as an ecosystem. So the motivations also result in, what is the ecosystem we're trying to thwart? Right, so it sounds like since the the attacks are so numerous, since the motivations are so numerous, that organizations almost need an unlimited or virtually unlimited budget to combat this threat. How can organizations, what can they do to sort of protect their data infrastructure? I think it's really a, an interesting time period we're in because we're seeing CISOs and CIOs now take on a different role of risk managers, now focus more on, hey, if, if the business has a growing dependency and technology to conduct day-to-day -day operations, what are the risks to that business goal and how do we help manage that? All right, so speaking of that new sort of landscape, mm -hmm. the new risk landscape that we're in, there's a lot of new pieces to the puzzle, right? There's cloud storage, there's apps as a service, there's everything as a service nowadays. Who's responsible for security in this new landscape? Is it the service provider? Is it the client? Is it the end user? Who's responsible? You're responsible, Bill. <laughs> and, we all are, right? Yeah, we, we all are, and, and I think if, if you look at information in this example, because that's, that's what you were leading into. If you look at information, uh, it has a life cycle. Let's take, uh, let's take the life of a healthcare record, all right? Somebody starts by creating it, typing it into a portal on their, on their PC at home, then that information gets transferred into a hospital for that, that medical uh, appointment that you're gonna have in a few weeks. That hospital now takes hold of that critical information and, and is the custodian. But then, you know, you go on vacation to Barbados, Bill, and when you're on vacation, you catch a, you catch a cold and you wanna visit a local doctor. Now that doctor has the ability to view that information. So then their machine is now part of the ecosystem. Right. And then you come back and you say, listen, I'm moving from, from where I am to another provider. I want that information destroyed. The point is, the information gets created, it gets transferred, it gets viewed, and hopefully it gets destroyed. And it's a combination of people as well as systems that create that fabric. And so there's a multitude of, of, of folks that have a responsibility to protect your information throughout its life cycle. So it sounds like you really need a multi-layered um, strategy when it comes to security. Um, what are the key elements of that strategy? Well, I think if we, if we look at the, the overall landscape, some of the key areas that companies need to focus on is, are, are about assuming the role of an attack actor. What does an attack actor do? They conduct reconnaissance on an environment. This is casing the joint in, in the old movies, right? They then conduct incursion. That's when they break into the place. They then try and find that asset of choice. That's when they're in a discovery mode. And then they try and exfiltrate that information. Now, if you walk in the adversary's footsteps and you assume that point of view, you understand all of the phases that they're going to conduct to, to execute an attack. I think when we're looking at it from a layered approach as security practitioners, we got to have the right countermeasures that allow us to prevent each of those phases of an attack from reconnaissance all the way to ex exfiltration. Tell me a little bit about the cybersecurity group. What is it that you guys do? So, Bill, when we formed the cybersecurity group, we looked at the attack actor. 
and we looked at the ecosystem that makes the attack landscape. And there are people who specialize in reconnaissance, the groups who specialize in incursion, the groups that specialize in discovering the asset once they're inside an organization, and those that are focused on the capture and exfiltration. And when we looked at it from that lens, we decided that what was really needed in the industry was an integrated solution that had the countermeasures against each of those phases of an attack. So what we did is we put together a managed intelligence organization that's focused on thwarting the attack actor when they're conducting reconnaissance and understanding when somebody's profiling a specific target, what their motivations are, what their tactics are, what's their real goal out of this. Then we have another group that's focused predominantly on the incursion phase. We call that the advanced threat protection. In essence, what these guys are after is when somebody's trying to break in through the front door, why, how, when, where. Then we have another group that's focused on monitoring, and we call that our managed services organization. In essence, this group is focused on when an attack is live, being alert to when it happens. Then we've got a group that's focused predominantly on that exfiltration phase. And, and in essence, this is our instant response. So when, when we see that bang go off or we recognize somebody's attacking, how do you stop the bleeding? How do you get in there, help triage the situation and lead to a commensurate countermeasure to stop the bleeding and allow that organization to protect its, its critical assets. And then the, underneath all of that, what we've built is something called the Security Simulation Organization. This is really a playground for organizations to develop their own security IQ, learn from those incidents that have happened and have a safe environment that's a simulated world where they can take that role of an attack actor, learn how they do what they do, and then develop the muscle inside that organization to thwart those attacks themselves. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining me, Samir. It's been a pleasure. It's been a great conversation. And thank you to our sponsor, Symantec. I'm Bill Detweiler. Thanks for watching. Symantec is proud to be a strategic partner at the Interpol World Conference. Visit us at our booth on Level 1 of the SANS Expo and Convention Center, Singapore, where we will discuss security issues and trends and how you can protect your information.